Hey, hey, everybody. We are here for the Woman Women's Wellness Forum. We are here. Welcome, welcome. We're taking a moment to share this out. We ask that you do the same if you're joining <laughs> us. Share out the broadcast because some women need to hear about wellness. Some women need to hear about wellness. All right. So welcome again to the Women's Wellness Forum. I am your host, your moderator, Nadia Francois, the founder and executive director of Sisters of Empowerment Social Organization. I am so pleased to be here for this 2022 Women's Empowerment Week. We have been empowering women all weekend, y'all, in person. It has been so amazing, so uplifting, and so inspiring. Today, we bring you our Women's Wellness Forum with the wonderful Dr. Bridget, <laughs> one of my great friends that I have connected with on this internet, this <laughs> internet, like, the, like we like to say, but it has been amazing. It has been an awesome connection. We have done some great things together already, and tonight mm -hmm. is not a, a takeaway, but it is an addition to everything that we have going. So we are going to set the tone of wellness in women. We are also taking questions, guys. So please, if you have any questions about your health, any questions about wellness or anything that we will talk about tonight, feel free to put it in the chat. We will definitely address it. Hey, Miss Sandy, thank you for sharing, mm -hmm. for coming in with us tonight. Miss Sandy Sanders. Oh, right. well, very good. So without further ado, I am going to introduce Dr. Bridget. Well, actually, you know how I like to do. I like to allow you to introduce yourself. Sure. But go ahead. So go ahead. I'm a I'm gonna step out for a second. Absolutely. <laughs> <for> a second. <laughs> Absolutely. So my name is Dr. Bridget Williams. Um, a lot of people know me as Dr. Bridget because I'm a medical cannabis doctor. But I am a family physician. I did nearly, I think, 18 years at the Cleveland Clinic as a family doctor and also in occupational health. And so I have a much longer experience helping families, helping women, helping you know individuals uh, reclaim their wellness through traditional medicine long before I found myself into the more um, alternative space. So I'm excited to work with Nadia and to really talk to us, like this is just a conversation about what we need to do, right? Yes. And yes. so I encourage and I love what you've been doing this weekend. And um, really, it's all about, you know, sometimes we need permission to do the right thing. So, yeah. So, Dr. Bridget, let's get it started. So, of course, we talked about how we sometimes just don't do what we supposed to do, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's not so much the health, sometimes it's not so much the wellness, but it is all us not prioritizing yes. our health and wellness. So tell yeah. us what we should be doing and what our mindset should be on with our wellness. Absolutely. So, and let me say, I'm as guilty as anybody. So <laughs> let's be accountability partners together on this, yes, right? Yes, yes. That um, we get busy. And not only do we get busy, but we make other people priorities because we have so much responsibility. We're nurturers, we are caregivers. And so we just get pushed farther and farther and farther down on our list, right? Yeah. And also, um, in the course of that, if something does come up medically, many times fear will hold us back from getting the information that we need. So whether we're not taking care of ourselves because we're taking care of others, or whether we're not taking care of ourselves because of afraid of what might happen or what might be said, we need to take control of our health. We need to feel empowered and know that whatever comes up that we can handle it. And we need to make time for ourselves. And, and, and I really challenge and encourage people to, to take that, take that up and make yourself a priority. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
So what do you, okay. So I want to talk about just some um, of the common uh, health issues that we face as women, mm -hmm. um, especially busy women, mothers, mm -hmm. um, such as high blood pressure, uh, mm -hmm. diabetes, you know, some of the most common uh, ailments that we go through. How do we um, keep ourselves from getting to that point in, mm -hmm. or, well, and once we've gotten to that point, because some of us have already reached, you know, that point, mm -hmm. is there anything that we can do outside of medication? Absolutely. So the problem with current the current medical um, landscape, the health systems, is that every diagnosis, there's a pill. You don't like the pill, take another pill. You got side effects, you're going to take one more. And that model has really deterred people from seeking out health um, visits and getting better at their health. Because many times for a lot of the people I see, the last thing they want to do is take one more pill and let alone the first pill in the first place. Right. Yeah. And so you taking control of your health, reclaiming your wellness, feeling empowered can decrease how quickly these things develop. Right. So delaying them. Um, and when you're on the run, it's hard to eat well. Right. And then when you're dealing with life, it's hard to manage stress. And if you're talking about whether it's genetically, we're developing diabetes or hypertension. Right. But also our lifestyle. There are two components there. Right. It's yeah. genetically we might have a predisposition for some of these things, but our lifestyle makes all the difference. And mm -hmm. changing that lifestyle can delay when some of these um, diagnoses actually show up. So it can be daunting, but once you start getting a handle on it, once you take one sip at a time and make choices about the food that comes in your house, right? Um, taking a little bit more time as far as packing some things, you're going to be in your car, you're going to be running all day, save yourself the money and take yeah. some food with you. Okay. And then yeah. if you need help deciding what's healthy, how you're going to control that, I guarantee you, that if you're making either a healthy sandwich or vegetables or fruit in your car, it is going to be less fat, less calories, um, and better for you than anything that you're going to get at any fast food or restaurant, right? It's just so easy to go through the drive through when yeah. you could have just put a cooler, you know, not, I'm not talking about the, the big cooler, right? Yeah. You don't have to pack all the type of cooler. You can just throw like, <laughs> throw some, some waters and a drink in there. And once you're in the habit of it, if yeah. you're out all day, you've saved yourself so much money, you'll see more money in your purse. And if that doesn't motivate you, you know, nothing will. Right. right. So, um, so number one, it's, you know, making a point of taking better care of yourself. And that sometimes means taking a little bit more time. You know, um, a lot of times we highly encourage people to try to take walks after dinner to try to find exercise you can just simply do in your home, right? You don't have to buy million dollar equipment. You don't have to join a gym, but there are things that you can just pull off of YouTube even. Some of these yeah. things that we make them more complicated and our culture says, oh, you have to do this and this and that. You don't have to do any of that, right? You can simply do things that are in your home. You can take food in your home. You can eat inexpensively and eat better than when you are you know, buying whatever it is on the road. Yeah, I like that. That's really good. Mm -hmm. So I want to address us mm -hmm. once we, you know, kind of go through um, getting a diagnosis that we probably didn't expect or, you know, didn't want to hear. Mm -hmm. How important is it for us to continue that follow up? Yeah, it can make it can be life and death, to be quite honest. I've seen horrible situations with people that, you know, in their early thirties, you know, stroke, have a stroke from high blood pressure. Right. Mm -hmm. I've seen, I've had patients that had a diagnosis of diabetes. They didn't like the fact that I said that. And then the next thing you know, their sugars are um, going sky high and they hit a median driving down the highway. I mean, wow. you, and those are two those are two um, conditions that you don't have a lot of symptoms of. So you don't know it's a problem until it's too late, 
right? Mm -hmm. So let me say that. And the one thing that I really push with my patients is that you might not want to take these medications and you might be afraid of what's going, you know, what might come down the line. But I highly encourage my patients, if you don't like what I'm telling you, let's work together to get you off of these pills. Yeah. And finding an accountability partner, whether it's your physician, I hope, okay, or other people in your life that can say, let's change the way we eat. Let's change your diet. And more importantly than that, because I'm, I'm starting at the end, just making the changes. Yeah. What is going on in your world that is making you make the choices that you're making? And that's yeah. when I started getting, when I was frustrated early in my career, um, because I felt like all I was doing was giving out pills constantly. Yeah. I started working with patients to get them off medications. And the first place I start was how did we get here? Because you didn't come like this, right? You, yeah. you know, a year ago you weren't like this. And usually there is a buildup, but some as your life develops, you've either developed bad habits, you've had higher stress levels, your your finances change. What has gotten you to this point? Because yeah. if we ignore that, all I'm doing is putting a Band-Aid. Okay, now you're eating a little bit better. But the stress that got you there, we haven't talked about. So I yeah. started actually putting patients on my lunch hour and at the very end of the day. Two spots where we could talk at least for an hour, right? And really started digging into what got you here. Let's not ignore that. Because otherwise, we're just putting Band-Aids on a bigger problem. Okay? Yeah. So I had um, a patient who... I was putting on high blood pressure medication, new diagnosis. She was going through a divorce. She was like, this is a highly, she was like, it is stressful. Yeah. And I was like, let's work this out. Let's see you through it. And maybe you'll be off. you know, maybe we can get you off of it. Let me tell you, six months later, we were taking off that medication because her lifestyle had changed. The stress was gone, right? And so sometimes, yeah, there are pills that will help you. And keep in mind, they will keep you safe yeah. until you change your lifestyle. So I don't, sometimes I delay starting medications, but a lot of times I'm like, we're just starting this to make sure you're safe. Yeah. But don't ignore changing the things in your life. It might, you might need to change your job, right? Mm. You know, you might need to change your friends. You might need to change your husband. I didn't say that. <laughs> they are stressful though. <laughs> But whatever it may be, um, let's not put Band-Aids on real life situations. And that's, Absolutely. I really, you know, I think we're in a society that we're like, we cope, we cope, we cope. No, sometimes we just, we change. We yeah. don't, coping is, isn't everything. It's, it's good that you can do it, but sometimes you need to change your situation. And I literally changed my job at one point, because I realized at one point I was on antidepressant medication. I was not sleeping well. I was, and I was like, what do you, it's not me. Mm -hmm. It's my job. Like, why am I doing this? Yeah. Changed my job, stopped all of it. Wow. I haven't been on it since. So let's think about what the problem is. Yeah. And not just put band-aids on, on the condition. So uh, more of a self-care approach, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And if your physician is doing personalized medicine, this is the conversation you should have. Because if you're just following the algorithm, okay, your blood pressure is this, we start this med. Okay, your diet, your blood sugars, okay, we start this med. But if they're saying, well, how do we get here? We might not even have to go that route, right? So take that seriously. Yes. And we yeah. have a question from D Jones. First off, yeah. I, I'm going to show that one, but she said men are stressful. <laughs> yes, we know. <laughs> but this is her question. Dr. Yeah. Bridget, what mm -hmm. is your advice on taking biometrics at home? Mm -hmm. BP of pulse ox glucose meter at home so mm -hmm. we can monitor at home. So um, I definitely think if you are have an established diagnosis, I highly recommend this. And why? Because now it's empowerment, right? Mm -hmm. That you are, you feel a certain way today, you, you know, you feel a little off, take your blood pressure, take your, you shouldn't have to wait to make an appointment. Now it's two weeks later, it's already too late. Mm -hmm. So now 
sometimes that can be overwhelming for patients as well. So I recommend asking your doctor, which machine should I buy? Um, some health systems give out free blood glucose meters. You just never ask. Yeah. Okay. So find out which machines they recommend, buy it. Okay. I, I, I don't read directions well either. Okay. But try to read the directions. There probably is a YouTube video, to be honest with you, to go along with it and bring it into the office. Okay. Yeah. Check your blood pressure next to the machine they have in the office. See if you have at least, like it should be only at best just a number or two off, right? If you're doing it right then and there at the same time. And then yeah. they can see that you're doing it. You can make sure that you're doing it right. You should feel empowered to check your vitals, check your biometrics whenever you feel the need to or whenever your doctor is recommending that you do it. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes, she is recommending that you do this. Yeah, with, and don't be afraid yes. of it. Don't be because I yeah. have some people that don't be afraid of it. It's good to be empowered. It is. It's good to be empowered. So, mm -hmm. are there some questions or some I'll say questions. Are there some questions that we should be asking when we go to the doctor? Well, I think a, one thing that I think goes undiscussed, I think doctors assume one thing and patients have different views of it at times. How is this a long-term medication? Mm. Okay. Because over and over again, I've had people that I, they get, you know, 30 pills of their blood pressure medication and they're done. And I don't see them again for six months. And then they come in and I'm like, what happened? And they're like, well, I did what you said. So is this a long-term medication? Number one, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, what can I do if I wanted to get off of this? What can I do? Because yes. I have some patients that I'm like, look, we can get you off of this. And they look at me and they're like, just give me the pills. They have no interest, right? Yeah. And then I have other patients that would do anything not to be on the pill. If you're someone that does not want to take these medications, ask what is it that you can do to get off of it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, because now they know that you're, you're talking from a place of motivation. Yeah. And a good doctor is excited about that because they're used to the person that says, just give me the pills. Yeah. So definitely ask that, right? Also ask about contraindications or how this might have adverse effects with other medications you take. Because as much as we have these, you know, electronic medical records and it cross um, checks medications and it should know your other medications as well, do the work, make sure you're asking these questions because things will pop up that, you know, go amiss a medication fell off of your list that could have been a problem, you know, what have you. And also ask your pharmacist. I mean, they're trained to have this conversation. Every time you go to the pharmacy, you know, you have to check a box saying, do you have questions? Ask questions. They love, clinical pharmacists love to interact with the patients. And I don't think we take good advantage of that at all. Yes. Yeah, so they're cutting grass right outside the window. So I had to mute for a second, but yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Some great questions. Mm -hmm. Now let's switch over to women's issues, right? Yeah. You know, we have our uh, reproductive issues. We mm -hmm. have our mental issues, different mm -hmm. things like that. So mm -hmm. how do we, I'm sure we have definitely talked about the self-care piece, but right. how do we approach our uh, annual or whatever is required for our women's wellness? So let's start with make the appointment. Okay. Make the appointment, make all your appointments, your dental, your vision, your, your full physical, your, if you go separately to a gynecologist, make the appointments, just it, it's a start right? Now yeah. that they're on the books, now at least it's in your, your mindset because after a while you kind of forget, right? Make yeah. the mammogram, make all the colon, do the colonoscopy. It's a good nap. Yeah. Okay. It is the colonoscopy is not the problem. It's the prep, but they have new prep yeah. that are much less difficult than the original ones that we were doing years ago. Okay. okay. So make the appointment. Um, preventive health is smart health. Let's not wait until we already find something that's down the line. Do preventive care. Okay. So that's yeah. number one. Number two, um, you know, particularly with black women, we have 
a great tendency in a genetic tendency to have a lot of fibroids, right? Whether yes. they're uterine, whether they're in your breast, we have a tendency to have these and we normalize it because what does your, my mom says, oh, I had that too. Oh, I had right. bleeding too. Oh, I'm anemic too. We hear it all the time. We normalize it in our community. It is not normal. Okay. Why are you tired all the time? Your hemoglobin is low. Okay. You're anemic. Let, you know, we, we find ways to work around it. This is not something you have to deal with. Okay. And it is not good for you. Anemia is not just that you're tired, right? It affects your heart. It affects your oxygen levels. You're working too hard. You know, you're making your body having to work to compensate. So you definitely, if you have heavy periods, get into the doctor, have this conversation. Um, sometimes, yes, they will give you a pill to try to normalize it, but sometimes that's not always the option. Okay. Yeah. So have a thorough conversation about this because I think in the black community, we normalize that way, way, way too much. Okay. Yeah. And then as far as like going towards the other side of that, um, and we're talking about more menopausal or perimenopausal type symptoms. Again, I think we suffer in silence. We do this well, right? We tend yes. to suffer in silence. Make those appointments to have a conversation about that as well. We don't recommend hormone therapy the way that we used to, but it is an option still for some, okay? Mm -hmm. And there are um, holistic options that can be helpful. The problem with a lot of the holistic is that they tend to work for a little bit and they tailor off, but then you try a different one and you make it through. But I will tell you, the best thing you can do is eat and exercise. Eat well and exercise. Because if you're eating the wrong foods, if you have a high fat diet, if you have a high diet, you know, with estrogen fueling type foods, right? Mm -hmm. um, you're going to have more symptoms. Wow. It is what it is. And so you're going to want a, a healthier diet. Like if you never wanted to do organic, because I personally think it's expensive, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> this is the time where you go a little bit more organic, right? Because you want to make sure you're not getting these heavy hormones or other things to your system. You want to eat as clean as possible. You want to put in the exercise. You. This is really when self-care, because it can make, there's a genetic aspect, of course, again, when we're talking about menopausal symptoms, but there's also what you, what part you play in it yourself. So, um, and everyone's so much different. So, uh, do the work to feel better, do the work to feel better. Right. It, it does. It's not for free. I love it. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love the preventive care. Mm -hmm. I love the, the smart health, right. Yeah. Want to be smart y'all. Um, like you said, doc, we have just been a product of our environment, right? We have mm -hmm. been products of our environment, in way many areas, way more areas than just our health, but we definitely need to tune in to that because more and more of us are getting diagnosed with things at an earlier age. Mm -hmm. um, as you stated, the hormones are playing a really big part in that, those hormones that are in the food. Mm -hmm. yep. So I'll just be transparent real quick. Mm -hmm. In 2018, I was in a car accident. And I was hit in the back. And so the way that I was sitting, I was holding my steering wheel with this arm. Mm -hmm. So it kind of knocked it out of socket or something. So I was having a lot of problems with this shoulder. Mm -hmm. So I was sent in for a uh, CT scan. Mm -hmm. And so when they did the CT scan, they found a growth in my throat. Mm, okay. On my thyroid. Okay. And so... Needless to say, at least at minimum one year, I'm thinking it's more like two, but I can definitely say at least one year prior to that, I had been having some horrible symptoms. My energy was very low, very extremely low. My um, hair had started like falling and shedding in handfuls. Mm hmm. I used to get these really bad hot flashes. Like it felt like I was on fire from the inside out mm -hmm. and I would sweat so bad. Right. And, and my respirations were very high. So mm -hmm. I was breathing, you know, people, and then I was trembling. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And so people would be like, what's wrong with you? You know, I'm a hairstylist, so I'm always doing something around, some, you know, for someone mm-hmm. or with someone or whatever. And so they'll be like, what's wrong with you? Or if I get the fan in or turning the air up, they sitting there like, oh, my God, it's freezing in here. Are you going through menopause? And I'm like, I don't think I'm I'm just 42 now. So mm-hmm. that was like, you know, five or six years ago. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't think so. But who knows? Right. And so. Fast forwarding back to when I had to get the CT scan, they found the growth on my thyroid and I began, I went to the doctor to get, you know, checked out because they were like, you need to get to the doctor right now because Mm -hmm. you have a growth. And so um, I don't even think they told me about my shoulder that day. (laughs) But needless to say, um, you know, I went through all of that for a long time. Yeah. And I did not take my butt to the doctor. Yeah. And you didn't need to go through that for so long, right? Like, yeah. You back. yeah. But, you know, what, you know, when you saying that, what really hits me and people assume that with me being a physician, I get, you know, red carpet treatment when I go to the doctor, when they know I'm a doctor and when they don't know I'm a doctor, I don't get any better treatment. Okay. <laughs> so um, I think, and because there's so often that we as black women go into the doctor, we're not heard, we're not seen, they don't, they're not connecting with how we're saying things. Cause we all say things, we describe things differently, right? right. You get blown right. off basically. Okay. Yeah. That it, we are less likely to go. And I will be very transparent that our other female counterparts come in for a split end. Because yeah. they're used to being heard and seen and acknowledged. Yeah. And it's because of that that your situation develops, right? Because right. you're like, well, do I go? Do I not? If you knew that you had a relationship with a doctor, that would be like, come on in, Nadia. What's going on? Let right. me take a closer look. Well, what else is going on? Well, you know what? Something doesn't seem right. If you had that, you would have been there a long time ago. But because we often don't get that type of care. Because we often get nervous or intimidated because we are not being seen, right? We delay care and we should not be tolerating that anymore, okay? Um, We need to create communities of doctors that we know we can go to in our states and our communities. We need to be able to share our stories with other people, not so that we can all do self-diagnosing, but that we can encourage each other to get to the place where we can get help. Okay. Yeah. We should not be suffering in silence. So I'm glad yeah. that, you know, and if it wasn't for your shoulder, how much longer would you have been? Right. You know? And that that's how I was looking at it. That's why I felt I needed to share that because mm-hmm. if I had not gotten in that accident, what would I, you know, like r- literally what would it would have happened to me for me to go and get checked or, uh-huh. and I'm going to, I'm going to just conclude the story mm-hmm. with my level of care that I received, which was mm-hmm. horrible. Mm-hmm. And it kind of put me back a few months, well, more like six months because the doctor that I was going to wasn't really familiar with, well, I was diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. Mm-hmm. And so the doctor that I was going to wasn't really familiar with the medication that mm-hmm. she should be prescribing. She prescribed the correct medication, but she wasn't sure of the dosages mm-hmm. because with the hyperthyroidism, if you take too much of the medication, then it can go to hypo, you know, so mm-hmm. she was looking out for me, but at the same time, I was not getting any relief because she didn't know how to treat it. How to it. dose it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so um, she then referred me, she did her job in referring me to a specialist. Right. Mm-hmm. But, oh my God, the bedside manner mm-hmm. was horrible mm-hmm. to the point where I don't think I, I stopped going. I did. I, I just stopped going. Mm-hmm. But then my symptoms were so bad. My mom was like, look, you need to do something. Yeah. So I ended up going to new Orleans to the doctor, which is Mm -hmm. like 80 miles from my house. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, but I have gotten relief. You can see I'm here. I'm full of energy these days. You know, my hair growing. I know y'all see me (laughs) posting out every now and then about my hair and the growth check. That's Mm -hmm. because y'all, my edges were like this long Mm -hmm. and now they have grown out 
as you can see, I have hair. Mm -hmm. um, I still shed, you know, because of course that's a symptom of medication as well. Mm -hmm. But my hair is in a much healthier state. My, my, my blood pressure did. And the thing about the thyroid is it affects so many different systems in your body. It does. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. I didn't know that. And, you know, so my blood pressure would be up and down, up and down, you know, different things like that. But mm -hmm. like I said, I thank God that the accident happened and I wasn't hurt, but I was able to see what was going on with myself and mm -hmm. able to get the care that I needed to get to back to a little bit of normalcy. Because when I tell you it was times that I had to call my mother who lives like 15 minutes away from me to pick my kids up and bring them to school because my body just would not move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it was horrible, but thank God <laughs> for the, look for the pills. Cause I take my pills y'all, but I am. Yeah. Um, and I'm not anti-pharmaceutical, right? Yeah. But I do believe in man, you know, help meet the medication at least halfway, right? Yeah. A lot of people take pills and they're like, well, this is all I have to do. And they eat however, they act however, they, you know, they, their, their whole system, they're not doing anything to help the pills. And then they wonder why they, the, the dosage went up and keeps going up and keeps going up because they're not doing anything to manage their conditions, right? Yeah. And so it's really important to do the work to manage your conditions because the medicine only can do so much by itself, right? Yeah. But I'm glad that I'm glad that you shared that story. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. And um, I think it's really, the, I really challenge people make the appointment just yeah make the appointment. And if it's not the right person, say, you know what? I don't think we're a good match because I don't think you're hearing your saying. Tell them, you know, people get intimidated by the whole process and I get it. But, and I've been in that situation where I was like, this is a bit, like, I am not being seen. I have had, yeah. I will be, I've had the wrong surgery because yeah. I was not being seen or heard. Okay. Yeah. Speak up for yourself. Do not be intimidated. You are the patient, but you're also the consumer. You're also, you. this is your body. And I don't care yeah. all the medicine in the world. No one knows your body better than you. So if yeah. they're not hearing that, then you're at the wrong office. Okay. Absolutely. And then find the office that will respect you, listen to you, and be able to have a conversation about what's right for you. I love that. Yes. Because I that was a part of the things I went through once I was referred to the local office here in Baton Rouge, girl, they tried to operate on me like that same month. I'm like, hold up, I need a second opinion. Right. And that's when I went and they were like, that is not the standard treatment for what you have, man. We don't cut, you know, you, you kind of stay on the medication for a while and mm -hmm. see if your levels come down. And I'm going to say the last time that I went to the doctor, which was earlier this month, all of my levels were normal mm -hmm. and they dropped my dosage. Very good. So I am Absolutely. so excited about that, but I am seeking alternative um, treatment or a wellness, a better lifestyle, you know, mm -hmm. because I don't want to be taking pills the rest of my life. Not right. at this, not from this point, maybe right, when right. I get a little bit older, you know right. what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I just really am that is on my list for this year is to yeah. seek out um, a more better alternative for my life than those right. pills. Cause I'm not a pill girl. I don't really care to swallow pills. Right. Look, I always say that's why I have so many kids. Cause I could, I wouldn't even take them little bitty birth control pills. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and that's the thing that if you, it's about meeting it halfway. It's about yeah. looking at other ways to approach your health back back it up a little bit. Right. Yeah. So, um, just in my own journey, I'm in kind of in the same place you are. I did my first Reiki session mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago because I'm like, I want to approach my wellness in different ways. And yeah. sometimes some of our most ancient practices are mm. ancient because they, they've lasted that long for a reason. Okay. Yeah. Fads will come and go and you'll see that. But some of our most ancient practices are there for a reason. So doing a little discovery in that area doesn't hurt. 
Yes. Awesome. I will definitely look into that. <laughs> so now let's turn the page to yeah. your specialty these days, which yeah. is the cannabinoid medicine. Yes. Right? Thank you. Look at you. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> So I want you to first tell us a little, enlighten us on yes. cannabis. Look, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to try to do it twice. Kind of medicine, yeah. Right. Because I'm going to mess it up the second time. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I, I, like I said, a family physician by trade and, um, but I got, as you, we shared here, I got frustrated and I knew my patients were looking for something different more than just a 15 minute visit. They weren't, they wanted to get away from some of these pills. And I had a patient 15 years ago that started asking me about cannabis. And for some people, cannabis is a new word. Cannabis is what some people call weed, marijuana, pot, whatever you choose to say. And I, whatever y'all want to call, call it. that, right? <laughs> but I, I was blown away. You know, I grew up with don't you at well, don't you ever number one, right? But you yeah. know, remember the commercials and this is your brain, the egg frying right, and, and the egg. I believe yeah. all of that, right? So um, so I was a little taken aback, but I looked it up and I was shocked to see all the medicinal aspects of cannabis that no one had ever mentioned before. Mm -hmm. This woman was highly educated. She had just finished treatment with breast cancer and she was now a newly new diabetic and she was not happy. And so I worked with her and her blood sugars were starting to normalize on cannabis, right? She was making her own uh, edibles and smoking. And her, she was about to lose her job. Her, uh, she was doing better as far as her work performance. She was sleeping better. Her stress was better. The blood sugar, she was losing weight. Everything I thought I knew about cannabis she totally blew it out of the water. So fast forward um, 15 years or so. And I, when it came to Ohio, I wanted to be a part of it. Um, I thought I'd do a little something on the side and I realized there's this big gap in the education. And so I opened my own offices, which are Green Harvest Health. And we focus on empowerment of the patient, education and empathy. Because for a lot of these patients, you know, I always think about what if my mom had to come in here, right? And they're nervous and they're yeah. sometimes looking at this as their last resort and they're yeah. sick. The one misconception is that people that seek cannabis for medicine are just trying to get high. I see sick patients, okay, yeah. that have problems that sometimes other medications can even address or they have liver and stomach and kidney issues that the other medications have destroyed their organs, right? Yeah. And so I see sick patients that are looking for help. And the misconception is that if you're using cannabis for medicine, that you have to be high all the time or high at all. I have patients I've been working with for three years and they say they've never been high one day because there's ways of combining CBD and THC, which are the two of the active components of cannabis, you combine them in a way that blocks the high. So there's ways to use this in a, in a way that will, um, that's convenient for every person and you don't have to smoke it. A lot of people, yeah. I don't, there's so many different ways to utilize this. You, you can take a, if you want to take pills, you can take a cannabis pill, you know? So there's so many different ways to utilize this that um, it's really working with someone that can help you kind of figure out what's right for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, let us know what um, what does the cannabis treat? Like what uh, symptoms? Absolutely. So technically, I'm not supposed to say it's treating, right? But you can add cannabis into your regimen, into your life to assist or address a numerous conditions. So let me start with this. The reason why it can do so many different things is because there are receptors riddled throughout our body, in our immune system, in our brain, in every organ of our body, including our skin. So you don't really, it is in um, the endocannabinoid system, which is how this all connects. Mm -hmm. It oversees every other system in our body. And what happens when you use CBD or THC, cannabis, hemp, whatever, is that it connects to these receptors that take really an assessment of that area and either up or down regulate different activity 
to bring it back to balance, back to homeostasis. So it's basically kind of like this checking point all throughout your body. And so that's why it's able to do so many things. Okay. So um, in saying that, I've people use combinations of this for anxiety, depression. Um, I'm just going to kind of run down the list here. Trichoma, right. Um, it, CBD can be used like if you've broken bones, it can actually strengthen that bone. So you're less likely to break it again. Um, it can be helpful for uh, normalizing your blood sugars, right? Um, it can I've obviously be very helpful for chronic pain, which is the most common thing. Um, PTSD, fibromyalgia, migraines, uh, um, we utilize it to decrease the spread of cancer cells and to actually kill cancer cells without killing the other cells around it, like chemotherapy does. Wow. Um, helps with a lot of GI issues, Crohn's, irritable bowel, um, ulcerative colitis. Um, you know, you can just run down the list. So, Wow. Wow. I didn't know it had all those. Okay. So we have a question. D yeah. Jones says, how does cannabinoid medicine help with women's health, such as perimenopause mm -hmm. and menopause in hormonal balance and even the thyroid function? Absolutely. So the way that, and I'll speak specifically to the CBD portion, right? Okay. C CBD and the, first of all, the endocannabinoid system, and our hormonal system are directly intertwined, okay? And so when you're using um, cannabinoids, CBD, THC, CBD can change your estrogen level. So it actually works in the cycles that you experience. And so it actually will lower it a little bit. Um, THC can actually increase a little bit. So there are some people that try to, try to utilize this in the process of working with their... Uh, um, periods and um, menstruation, or even in the attempt of trying to get pregnant sometimes, because you need certain hormone levels to be up to, for, uh, for, for, for the egg to actually, or for the sperm to actually um, go into the egg, you need a, another hormone level for it to actually attach to the um, inside of the uterus. So, I mean, people use this in different ways, yeah. but um, because the, how the endocannabinoid system works, it helps them tremendously, even with temperature control, which wow. is probably the one thing that people complain about the most when it comes to menopause and being able to utilize it in a way that can help decrease hot flashes. Uh-oh. I said uh -oh. the word. I said the word. <laughs> Yes, you did. You did. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And so the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, we still need a lot of research in a lot of these areas, but, and so I am not here to say, Hey, stop all your medications. Right. But I can say that um, if this is not something that you've looked at before, you know, this is what we do consultations on. I learned about you. I learned about your medications. I try to see, is there a combination that might be right for you and for your help? So amazing. Yes. So thank you, Dr. Bridget, for answering that question. D Jones, I hope that that helps you out. Thank you for joining us tonight. And so before we wrap up, I want you to tell us more about your CBD business. Mm. Um, Dr. Bridget has formulated her own CBD. And so I want her to tell us more and then we will wrap it on up. Absolutely. So, um, Gosh, when we first opened our doors, I had two people come into me saying CBD doesn't work, it doesn't do anything, you know, what have you. And they each actually had tincture bottles with them. So a tincture is um, an oil that you, it has a little pipette and you can, it had usually a CBD combination that you can put underneath your tongue, absorbs into your bloodstream. And so um, when I looked at the product, it looked weird. The color was weird. It smelled weird. It looked like they had olive oil and caffeine. Mm. So at that, and I recommend a lot of CBD. I believe it's the workhorse of cannabinoid medicine. It's really what repairs the system and balances it. Mm -hmm. And I felt a certain way that people were getting things that weren't going to help them. Yeah. So um, I started working with some companies that were developing products. And eventually I had a sense of what I wanted my, 
my patients to have. And so I started kind of using my science background and my experience in the area and started formulating our own tinctures. Um, and uh, so that we have options that I think reflect our patients' needs. Awesome. So guys, listen, Dr. Bridget has her formula. I specifically have tried it myself. I have been uh, a CBD client for about the past month or so. Mm -hmm. I am actually a, a vendor of hers now. So you all look out for Aries Wellness coming up next month. Right. But, you know, I... I'm going to just tell you that awakening one is the bomb.com. You know, yeah. I already told you I have energy issues, baby. I put me a couple of drops of that and I can take on the world. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not euphoric. Like people aren't high. Right. It's, right? Not. it's not. It just kind it's a combination of CBD and CBG, which is another one of the cannabinoids. And it's the terpenes, the essential oils of the can cannabis plant, but in a combination that is elevating, right? So it's called awakening for a reason. It can help with energy, anxiety, decreases your cortisol levels. Um, and it does it in a way that uh, is good for daytime. So. I love it. And then that nighttime one, look, I take all the, it's the three, I like the three, uh, the three, three piece set. That's what I'm trying okay. to get out. Okay. The three piece set. So the nighttime one is amazing as well because mm -hmm. I won't. Well, the my thyroid issue causes me to not sleep a long time, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but when I tell you if I take that nighttime serenity, yes, it'll knock me out in about 10 minutes. It is, <laughs> and then you wake up good though, right? You wake but up. I, I was gonna say it is the most restful sleep. Yes. Very restful sleep, guys. Very yeah, it doesn't restful. feel like a drugged sleep. If you ever no. take sleep medications, you know, I take drug. muscle mm -hmm. relaxer sometimes mm -hmm. with that shoulder, mm -hmm. and I hate them. And that, yeah. so that's why sometimes I um take the serenity. I don't really need it to go to sleep all the time, but sometimes mm -hmm. I do, you know, because mm -hmm. it depends on what I'm going through. I'll put it mm -hmm. like that. But so what's the third piece of your of your three the pieces? The gummies, the gummies. Yeah. So yeah. I'll take um one gummy in my awakening in the morning mm -hmm. and one gummy in my serenity at night. Very good. Very good. <laughs> I love that. And the that fact of the matter is that's also the beauty of cannabinoid medicine that you have a little bit more freedom yeah. to figure out, okay, what's what is my body telling me to do? What works for me? Right. Yeah. Like I often take two gummies at night and just the awakening in the morning. And sometimes I switch it out with the serenity. Yeah. And I used to be on heavy sleep medications. Right. Yeah. And so um, you can create the combination that's right for you. And me, the gummies during the day, sometimes I'll take a half if I yeah. like buzzing around and I can't focus. Yeah. So um, it just it. Listen to your body. I don't want to. I don't want to cut you off. But mm -hmm. you said focus. See y'all. Yeah. It helps with that. I am so like. I mean, you know, I have. I don't have an issue with doing what I gotta do. But we all like. I think as we get older, we kind of get a little ADHD ish. <laughs> and so, listen. When I first started taking the CBD, I was like. It just feels like my brain is so clear, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and it, it it was just really like the name awakening. It was really awoke. <laughs> but, you know, I think what's important for people to understand is people ask me all the time, what does CBD feel like? Yeah. And what I tell them is CBD feels like normal. Right. Now, your normal, my no, it's not going to be the same. Right. Right. But what it does, it brings your body back into balance. And it's yeah. hard, like what normal, like there's no way to describe normal. Right. right. But that, that isn't that what we're always seeking? We're seeking yes. to feel like who, what we should feel like. Yeah. CBD, because it balances your body, it makes you feel like normal. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. And just some more insight. So yeah, I am super excited, guys. We are uh, 
bringing you Women's Wellness Forum here on Sisters of Empowerment. Uh, Women's Empowerment Week. We are schooling the women on this wellness. I have here Dr. Bridget Williams. I also want you to talk about a little bit about your book and then mm -hmm. we will close up. Absolutely. So I think it, no, it's here. All right. <laughs> Know, right. Yes. There you go. Um, so Courage and Cannabis is a book that I created with um, 17 other authors. Um, uh, we launched in December and it's called Courage and Cannabis. It is stories about people that have how cannabis has changed their life. So whether it's CBD, so I use the word CBD, cannabis and CBD interchangeably, but there are doctors and lawyers and entrepreneurs that left good jobs and took a leap and decided to go into the cannabis industry, parents that had to give cannabis to their children, people that struggled with their faith, addiction, caregivers that were taking care of their parents, activists, journalists, people, everybody that, you know, a, a diverse group of people that where cannabis changed their life. And it is inspirational and educational. Um, and just, and we utilize the book, not just for a good read, but um, we give it to church members, you know, we give it to legislators, um, to people that sometimes, you know, we give it to parents that are kind of giving their kids a hard time, you know, adult kids yeah. even for using yeah. cannabis. It just helps them understand this world in such a different way. And yeah. so, like I said, it's definitely educational and it's a great inspiration if, if you're interested in this space as well to really learn about people that are walking that walk. So, yeah, I love it. And that's how Dr. Bridget and I met. Yeah. I interviewed her and some of her authors when they launched their book, their best-selling book. Yeah. So, yeah. But, y'all, this has been amazing. Dr. Bridget, do you have any final words? Uh, just reach out to me. I'm always happy to talk to people. And I love what you do. I love what you do for women. So I'm always about supporting. Um, and and you're, you're the true entrepreneur, without a doubt. That fire is unstoppable. So um, I'm always game to work with you. Awesome. I love it. So y'all be stay tuned. We cooking up something to keep this wellness train going, y'all. We want to keep empowering our women. We want to do so much, but we are going to do it, right? Yeah. So y'all listen, this has been amazing. Women's Wellness Forum. Make sure you share it out. This is uh, can be watched on a replay. So make sure you share it out with people that need this information. We have covered a lot tonight a lot. Um, we were supposed to be off a while back, but we were rolling. So we kept it going. So <laughs> listen, guys, take care of yourselves. Look, put you first, right? Because sometimes we got to be a little selfish. We got to be a little selfish and make sure that we're good because we can't take care of someone else if we're mm -hmm. down. All right. So the reason for this was to give you some pointers, some help. If you need to reach out to Dr. Bridget, tell them how they can do that, doctor. Absolutely. So you can always reach me directly at um, greenharvest.health is my um, website. And then I'm a life coach as well. You can also find me on um, coachingdoc.com. Awesome. So y'all reach out. And make sure you continue to follow us for the rest of the week, Women's Empowerment Week. And we will see you next time. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bridget.